Hi, it's Michael, Michael Walton, a category manager and part of the product management team in Rigel. Um, today I'm going to give a presentation of or an introduction to the, our multi-flow device which is uh, an infusion pump analyzer. Effectively, uh, the whole presentation will be based around some fundamentals of infusion device testing, um, a little bit of theory, and we'll go into the actual, what the, the, the benefits are of having an uh, electric analyzer, electronic analyzer like the, like the multi-flow, and uh, we'll go from there. So, infusion devices, it is estimated that 80% of hospitalized patients receive intravenous therapy. Used extensively in clinical settings and patients' homes providing perioperative care, uh, critical care and pain management. The infusion of fluids to patients in a predetermined and consistent manner. Using a variety of designs providing the ability to feed, hydrate, medicate or receive, uh, replace um, blood loss to a patient in a predetermined and consistent manner. So really it's the predetermined and consistent manner that is pretty critical for infusion devices. An infusion pump is typically electronic and used to control the administration of these intravenous fluids to deliver a measured amount at careful regulated rates. They can provide quite high but controlled pressure to inject a controlled amount of fluids. However, pressure values vary with different pumps. Treatment delivered through infusion directly into the bloodstream needs to be accurately controlled and often includes calculations based on patient's physical condition. They can administer fluids at flow rates from 0.1 milliliter per hour, uh, which would be too small for a drip, um, providing um, medication at predetermined intervals, providing repeated boluses on request by the patient, which is patient-controlled analgesia, and uh, where volumes vary by the time of day and also extended durations. Occlusion is the obstruction or closure of the passageway or vessel. A blockage in an infusion device causes pressure to build up, which can reduce the flow and cause harm to the patient. Most infusion pumps have predetermined occlusion pressure thresholds where the, an alarm limit activates once the pressure exceeds this limit. If the inclusion pressure alarm is set too high, then harmful effects can be prolonged prior to the alarm. Therefore, testing the occlusion pressure is crucial to infusion pump safety. Types of infusion devices. There are a variety of different types of infusion devices, which are all individual procedures and mechanisms. They share an aim to provide accurate infusion at a predetermined rate over a set period of time. Infusion pumps in general use positive pumping actions which provide an accurate flow rate. All infusion pumps have commonalities including alarm systems and some type of control panel to, uh, to set rates. Pumps are designed in a variety of clinical applications and their performance characteristics vary depending on the delivery of volume, long and short term accuracy and speed of the divided infusion. There are many different types of infusion pumps which can be used for a variety of purposes. So gravity controllers is pretty much an IV bag which is situated higher than the patient's heart and the fluid um, via gravity will, will feed towards the, the patient using the roller clamp to control the flow. 
timing, how fast the drops fall through the tube chamber enables the flow rate to be calculated, the quicker the flow rates, etc. Um, each 300 millimeter increase in height of the IV bag produces approximately um, 25 millimeters of mercury of pressure. This method of infusion is often used in emergency rooms by paramedics in ambulances and quick and easy way to infuse fluids. Syringe drivers utilize an electronically controlled electric motor to slowly depress the plastic syringe, piston, plunger. The electronics control the, the speed, which is the flow rate, the distance, which is the volume infused and the force, which is the pressure of the syringe and the plunger being pushed. Syringe drivers are preferred choice for low volumes and lower mm. flow rates, can infuse um, small volumes of fluid over extended periods of time whilst maintaining a constant rate. Volumetric pump, the most sophisticated type that moves uh, peristaltically um, and forces fluid into the patient's vein under pressure and resistance. The IV bag is situated higher than the pump and the patient and pump utilizes this linear peristaltic action um, or uses a, a special cassette known as a piston cassette to control the uh, infusion fluid. The type of pump is not considered accurate or appropriate to deliver fluids lower than 5 milliliters per hour. Peristaltic action is a continuous rippling wave motion which can be linear or rotary and the cassette type pumps have a plunging mechanism built into the tube and set where the stepper motor drives the motion. Ambulatory pumps, small light battery powered syringe or cassette mechanisms which were designed to be portable or wearable given the patient freedom to move and receive the treatment uh, allows the medication to be administrated on outpatient basis especially for those who need all need round the clock injections uh, most of these pumps have minimum alarms which mean the patient carers need to be closely monitored closely by to, to monitor and it's susceptible to being dropped knocked um, electromagnetic electromagnetic interference uh, in general um, critical drugs which require a constant flow should not be administrated using this device. Fluid delivery patterns. So we've discussed three basic infusion devices. Um, the pattern of which has various different characteristics. Um, the syringe is um, pretty much what you would expect. Uh, really constant flow with slight deviations the volumetric as you can see is a bit more sporadic and the ambulatory is uh, is, is, is a lot more dynamic um, each pump delivers fluid accurately at five percent of set rate but different manufacturers have different specifications Infusion characteristics. In an infusion system, the pump uses pressure to overcome resistance to flow to deliver the infusion. The greater the resistance in the IV circuit, the higher the pressure is required to deliver a prescribed flow. Resistance arises due to filters, anti um, siphon and anti reflux valves, administration sets, particularly the cannula. cannula um, the internal diameter of the tubing, um, potential kinking of tubing, sticky of, or viscous solutions and um, syringe, cassette, uh, stiction can accumulate all of these pressures. So it's the system really where you can have this um, almost residual type of pressure. The pressure available 
is related to the height that the bag or bottle of fluid is situated above the patient's heart. Uh, increased the height produces uh, greater pressure. So infusion devices must be capable of delivering infusions at pressures between 100 to 750 millimeters of mercury to overcome any internal or external resistance factors. Um, the patient's venous system contains pressure and therefore the IV uh, infusion device must be proven to be compatible with the device found in the body. And we have a table there which gives approximations of delivering uh, fluid, what, what the filter is, what the pressure to come over the pressure of the cannula, uh, etc. And typically uh, it's been estimated that the full system could be 140 ish um, millimeters of mercury. Problems associated with infusion. Millions of infusion devices are safely used in hospital, healthcare organizations, in the community every year. Incidents in infusion continue to dominate adverse incident um, reports. Um, slightly dated, but still relevant, is some information that at least a thousand incidents investigated by the MHRA between 2005 and 2010 in the UK. Um, and there's a breakdown with a pie chart on the, on the right hand side. The majority of these problems relate to over-infusion of drugs, either due to user error or dosage and patient data, product design, engineering or software malfunction. So it communicates a, um, pretty much, there's a lot of different aspects that can go wrong with using an infusion device. Um, the breakdown there has 11% that were um, device related, 21% user error, and then a big slice of that where the cause just kind of be established. Genuine infusion pump malfunctions are typically rare, uh, except when a pump has been mishandled, dropped or damaged. So being the biomed, we the pretty much always know that when a medical device comes back in for service, either um, from planned preventative maintenance or if it was to come back um, from a, a non-scheduled maintenance for repair or whatever, um, typically you would do your um, periodic, or well, at least it would be periodic if the manufacturer was to um, suggest and cite and advise that um, the, an infusion device should be calibrated or at least um, verified every year but it all depends on what risk factors um, if it is unscheduled maintenance then clearly it's going to be um, after the repair. So the FDA in a similar time period, approximately uh, 56,000 reported incidents involved the use of infusion pumps, including numerous injuries and deaths, which is you know unfortunate. It's, I mean, effectively, when I do these type of talks, not so much infusion, but everything that we manufacture is is, um, is pretty much based on patient safety and. When I put these things together, it really saddens us, I must admit. Um, 87 infusion pump recalls are addressed, um, identified with safety concerns. So infusion is a really common, although because of the massive infusion devices that's out there, because of the most common device in a hospital, there's going to be errors. Um, even if it's a small percentage because of the volume um, it's still more significant than, than many other medical devices. Um, more serious errors are always involved in the use of these infusion devices. Um, so IV administration always carries a risk to, to tissue damage. Correct occlusion monitoring can reduce the risk of this um, tissue damage and incorrect flow rates or bolus can lead 
to over or under treatment. Testing these infusion devices. So the standard pretty much lays out the design criteria, um, which is 60601-2-24. And just like the whole series of 60601 is for the particular requirements for safety. Um, internationally recognized standard, pretty much how your infusion device uh, or how a infusion device performs yeah, comes back to some of the characteristics in the standard and how it performs. Um, because infusion devices are really common, um, often more than two to a bed, it's, it would be good to get some informed um, or at least become informed with the standard, familiarize yourself with some of the mathematics that's used and how stability is um, is pretty much put together within the standard, um, especially over periods of time to get average flow rates. Um, so that's something useful. The, the multi-flow in particular is a device that is fully compatible uh, to the 60601-2-24 standard. Test and infusion devices, the reliability of medical devices such as infusion pumps is extremely important. We all know this because these devices are used to patients who are likely to be in a critical condition. Infusion pumps must be periodically but tested. As I said earlier, this is pretty much risk-based, um, but more critically tested by qualified personnel, competent personnel, informed personnel to um, determine whether they function correctly, fit for purpose, um, meet manufacturer's specifications. There is a wide range of methods to use and test and I'm going to go over some of these because I think it's important from a metrology point of view. Um, going over different methods, let's have a look at the pros and cons of these different methods. And uh, but the procedures are still valid. There's nine different ways to skin a cat in regards to um, measuring flow rates and then determining um, if um, infusion device is fit for purpose and meets manufacturer specification. However, um, there, there are some simplistic and uh, nice to have features with using something like the Rigel Multiflow. But the, the primary aim really is accuracy, or accurately measure uh, to the delivery of volume and flow rate of the infusion device. Check the uh, occlusion alarms and determine the, how safe these things are to use. Testing should reflect what the manufacturer recommends. Always manufacturer, has a specification, um, how you determine how you act, how you determine the um, how fit for purpose it is in regards to specification is open to interpretation. But if you're an informed um, clinical or biomedical engineer and you know metrology and you know how to calculate flow rates and you know what accuracy is and you have traceability back to national standards, this type of thing, well, then it, the choice on how you determine accuracy um, and traceability back to the national standards for quality management um, system purposes is entirely up to the healthcare organisation. And there's a variety of methods currently used to test this infusion. I'm going to go over some of them. Fundamentally, the aim is to measure the accuracy and delivery of these uh, volume flow rates over a range of time periods. Typically, anywhere, because you can extrapolate, you, you don't have to do everything over an hour, even though the flow rates are determined per hour. You don't have to uh, spend that type of time doing these, this type of testing. Um, so, common flow measuring principles you've got volumetric, so flow is calculated for a certain volume 
uh, has been delivered and the greater the volume of a certain time the greater the flow simple mathematics physics mass flows calculated based on temperature difference between two points Within the sensor, the greater the temperature difference, the lower the flow. Bubble tracking flows calculated uh, based on the displacement of an inserted uh, air bubble uh, into a um, flow sensor part. The greater the displacement, the greater the flow. Um, pressure based flow is regulated within a uh, flow sensor to a set line pressure. The greater the potential pressure buildup in the line, the greater the flow rate. And displacement of a syringe pump, a syringe plunger, flow rate is calculated based on volume displaced by a syringe plunger over time. The syringe type and volume are required to provide an accurate calculation. Occlusion and alarm pressures are tested. So each a manufacturer will have an alarm that can be set and an alarm threshold and this can be tested using um, pressure manometers or with uh, the Rigel multi-flow has an inclusion um, set and test parameter where you set the pressure and um, you set the test and you can determine the period uh, and accuracy of these pass-fill thresholds for a safe amount of occlusion. Um, when looking at the accuracy of um, an infusion system, it must be looked at as a whole, as a full system, not just the pump and the driver individually, because inaccuracies um, can happen within the measuring device um, i.e. this can be small percentage errors with uh, the syringe that's used, the tube and might have a kink in, air bubbles, this type of thing. So it really needs to be um, stressed that because accuracy is um, key and infusion devices are typically for medical devices quite accurate. Some are, some aren't, but Syringe drivers in particular can be quite accurate. You, you need to um, consider the, the effects that the tubin has and the, the, the right, or at least the, the methodology of testing, can be considered that it would be better to have it in a laboratory um, conditions um, to get the, the best accuracy because flow can change. I could do the same setup twice and um, there could be a little kink in the, in, the, in the cable or air bubble and that can have an effect on overall accuracy. So it's important to, uh, to look at these things when considering testing um, infusion devices. So the recommended checks of an infusion device, acceptance testing, so your procurement team have decided to um, you know, get these devices in or at least give them some kind of uh, check before they're going to be accepted across your healthcare organization. You would use, you're going to have to use some kind of um, metrology setup to test the validity of the accuracy that the manufacturers claim. Um, regular testing. So this is the scheduled maintenance in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations. You know, um, this could, could be risk-based or it could be uh, typically annually um, where you would look at, you know, visuals and door alarms to make sure that the, everything mechanically is sound in regards to alarm settings. Then we look at flow and volume accuracy that's specified by the manufacturer. We check the occlusion alarms to make sure them are functioning correctly. And then you might want to do a bolus or patient controlled analgesia check, which the, the multi-flow has that um, capability. And then routine um, testing, you know, daily checks for damage, 
water ingression. So it all depends on how your risk management is set up within your healthcare organization. I, I also mentioned earlier about the non-scheduled maintenance, which could be, you know, down to damage and some kind of repairs being knocked over, give it a quick check. So in testing of these things, I mean, I've used all different ty types of methods of testing and fusion, and it's quite cumbersome. I, I, I believe it, a lot of it is awkward and cumbersome. I'm using various methods that we'll go through. And of course, if it's uh, something like a syringe pump or a volumetric pump, then um, it will need an electrical safety test. As far as I'm concerned, you would use 62353 because it's a service test. Um, 60601 is purely for manufacturing. Um, however, your healthcare organization still might adopt the, the dated 60601 um, electrical safety protocol. So measurement technologies. We've got barrettes and cylinders, which are pretty much the basic in any type of laboratory to measure volume. You know, they're reasonably fast, cost effective, but the scale is a factor because the scale in, um, is, has limitations because of the degree of accuracy between the, the, the scale itself. You've got to um, rely on the accuracy of the human eye and how level it is. It needs to be on a, a level surface to get premium accuracy. Now, those alone um, cannot be trusted. I personally, coming from a metrology background, looking at barrettes, looking at scaling, you know, you've got evaporation and all the other environmental conditions to, to consider. Um, just for me, very resourceful to, to monitor and not particularly that accurate. It can be accurate if you get the scale incorrect, but they're just a resourceful, um, time-consuming device to use. We have a balance or a scale where this is an accurate method where we weigh the water over time because water has um, is equal to or almost equal to one gram at a certain temperatures but we need to monitor these environmental parameters so humidity pressure temperature evaporation all these things need to be monitored to get really accurate results so pretty much they need to be set up in a laboratory condition um, stopwatches required um, physical disturbance of the ter if I have some skills and you know we've got experience here within uh, within Rigel Medical if I use skills then I rest on the table it's one of the cables gets nudged a tube and sorry gets nudged all these type of things um, that have a factor on overall accuracy and although it's the really great and really uber accurate um, there's a lot of shortcomings by using um, skills. So again, they're resourceful to monitor and single channel, one set of skills, one, um, one infusion device. You, you would have to have various sets of skills and jigs to set this thing up. So we, I mean, I've, again, we, we've used the skills and it's, it's, there, it's a cumbersome setup. It's not, it's not ideal. Especially if you try into uh, in a healthcare organisation where you want quality management in in quality management systems in place, you want to be mitigating risk, you want to be managing this risk. Well, if I was to evaluate risk with these other devices, um, I would have to accept some of the risks involved in these these different. Um, technologies of uh, measurement technology. There's a, a particular infusion device manufacturer that uses vernier calipers and dial gauges. 
uh, to give a direct reading of distance measured, uh, really high accuracy and precision devices, um, almost like the, the, the linear travel gauges. Uh, these methods are used to check the, the plunges um, travel accuracy, then we have a force gauge to, to measure uh, the, the force or the, the pressure. Stopwatches required, um, but again resourceful and awkward to set up. A very man heavy, you know, you've got to um, you've got to put a lot of workforce into checking these things and it's a single channel a device at a time all of these methods really, uh, the one commonality is they're resourceful. And then we have infusion device analyzers, and the, which offer a number of advantages. And this is where I am doing this presentation because the Rigel has the multi-floor, which is an infusion pump analyzer. Um, and effectively, the user in an automated test setup can set the test up, um, can run the test unassisted, and it allows the user to you know, move away from the work area and do some other work. So you set up, you set the infusion device, you set the um, infusion device analyzer, and then you're, you're aware, you've got an hour or whatever time you've set to do the tests, to do with the more important um, testing procedures. And this is where, that, this is the real advantage. So analyzers, analyzers provide that real time um, record and delivery rate and volume rate um, to give you this continuous infusion device testing without the, the constant supervision, so you can just, you know, it's a, this, the other methods all need some kind of um, constant um, evaluation or the, the, the require much more manpower, whereas the, the infusion device analyzer doesn't. So the, anal the analyzer itself can also, which is pretty much, a, for me, a fundamentally, the a real unique selling point, so to speak, is that you get readings straight off the bat. You can have a look at the screen and each parameter will give you a moment in time reading. So you don't have to extrapolate readings by calculating volume and calculating flow rates. You get instant flow rates, you get average flow rates, you get volume that's been infused, a look at pressure and all the, so if you have um, an incorrect setup um, all these anomalies are instantly available so you can see that actually this I'm setting 100, millime, 100 um, milliliters per hour on my infusion device yet my instant flow is 50% um, out of specification already. I don't have to wait 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes to realize this. I can see it within an instant. So there's the, you, you, it's, a, it's a time saver. You're not, you're not going through any long process. What, what might take an hour, you can pretty much determine if you set up, your tubing is correct, You've got the right fluid, etc., um, and we'll go on to fluids later on because it's really important within uh, uh, infusion device analyzer. So it's the instantaneous thing for me, which is the real benefit for a biomedical or clinical engineer. Um, analyzers also provide this automated multi-channel testing solution, so you can have up to four independent channels free to run for independent infusion devices. So this you know, reduces the overall time. You kind of do that with a set of skills. You kind of do that with one set of um, linear travel gauges and calipers. Um, you need four members of staff to do that type of thing. So they, they have big benefits to reduce the overall testing time um, whilst maintaining you know, a good degree of accuracy 
and minimizing all of these, uh, you know, input and errors associated with uh, other technologies. So now I'm going to compare some technologies that's actually used in analyzers, some of our uh, competitors or what has been used in the past. Because some analyzers um, will, will pretty much use a volumetric method where flow rates um, and accuracy depends on the volume uh, perfused. The, the problem with this really is that, or you can, when I say problem, the advantage uh, that we have as a manufacturer over some, some other technologies is that we can give um, pretty reliable instantaneous readings within seconds. Um, accuracy flow rates um, for anything between 16 to 200 millimeters per hour um, do require some kind of volume to be uh, perfused. Um, whereas uh, the multi-flow doesn't because it uses a different type of technology. Um, measurements are reliably inaccurate until this volume is being infused. So you at least need 200 mill millimeter milliliters of volume to get accurate. I mean, this isn't really that acceptable or for me. It can be acceptable if you're biomed, but if, if time's key and personnel's key, Low flow rates, um, in particular, you, you're not going to be able to get reliably accurate readings. Um, and the accuracy per, per sample, i.e. per pump, is, uh, is unknown. So these low flow rates where we have compromised accuracy perhaps, um, you need a minimum of four hours to test or two hours with a rival device, with a multi-flow. What we have is a little reservoir chamber that's 50 microliters. So it's a summation of really accurate um, and to 1%. So each sample reading, which is divided into 200 resolutions of 50 microliters, can be, um, can be used in a very short space of time to get really good accuracy um, and flow rates from 0 0.1 to uh, 1500 milliliters per hour. Um, tests are accurate within a short period of time. We have a you know, one hertz update rate. Flow rates can be shorter than other competitors and we can also test patient controlled analgesia. So effectively the, the beauty of the multi-flow design is the, the small reservoir, this precision pump um, which can empty, fill and empty and has 200 resolutions per fill and empty to give this really precise accurate read. So what are we testing? What's offered? We're testing with, um, with the multi-flow. We have flow rates, we have occlusion, and we have bolus um, patient-controlled analgesia. So flow rates, we can have both manual and automatic mode. So we can set up a Within an automatic mode, if you have a service manual and you have a test set up for various flow rates, you can do that sequentially. You can do 10 milliliters per hour, 100 milliliters per hour, a liter per hour, um, and then extrapolate the, the, the time. And, and all that can be done automatically, followed by user tests, like alarm settings, and then followed by um, occlusion testing. So there is capability of setting up automatic tests or, which I'll be demonstrating later, a manual mode where you just go into the, the, the tester itself. You can select up to four channels. Um, you select one of the channels, 
within that channel you can select the, the floor volume oh, sorry the type of test this happens to be the floor volume test the floor rate selected the back pressure amount the um, sampling window the duration you want to be um, infusion over and also some accuracy of the you've set flow rate which I'll, I'll go into uh, later on and what you'll see is um, the time that you're going to be doing the testing let's say 15 minutes an hour etc the average flow rate which is the really the flow rate that you should be using um, to determine flow rates the peak flow rate so it'll give you the peak values instantaneous is the real selling point because the instantaneous will give you that the, the because we have the capacity of the indexed um, reservoir this chamber that's very accurate we can give you instantaneous flow rates within seconds it takes a while before they stabilize I mean granted because of the dynamics of how a infusion device works uh, however, um, it will give you that indication of any errors in the setup within a couple of minutes. We have minimum flow rates. We have percentage deviation of set pressure. We have the uh, volume that's been uh, infused, and then we have a pressure, and we can set the pressure up in a PSI, a millimeters of mercury, and this type of thing. And then it'll give us some readings um, uh, as we go on, and I'll show you an example of that. And then we have a graph setting. So if I wanted to show the flow rate and how the, a syringe driver or volumetric pump is performing, we, that can be displayed. Occlusion test, where is it? It's measuring pressure, measuring pressure buildup to test the alarms, and effectively, what happens is um, we're measuring when we can hear the alarm because the alarm is set for the, the patient safety effectively and within the manual mode you just set up the um, occlusion test you would set you would set within the service manual it'll tell you to go at a certain rate um, and within this flow rate we can um, determine the time it's taken to get the occlusion alarm and we can also determine the pressure and then there's what we have on the on the graph here or setup is the your pass fail thresholds almost and the point in which the pressure was alarmed which you can trigger with the, the multi-flow and then we have uh, the patient control and analgesia um, bolus testing where if your infusion device has the capability we put the baseline rate in which is the basal rate um, and then when you want to request a bolus in the syringe pump the multi-flow will um, adjust accordingly and it will measure the volume here down the bottom of the bolus that's been infused. It'll give you um, the volume in milliliters. Also gives you a reading of the, the bolus rate, uh, basal rate. And then one thing which, if you use in conjunction with Medibase, is uh, remote control. So um, you can produce test sequences and individual tests to reduce time for setups. So you can pretty much every infusion device you have set up in your hospital. The time it takes to set these things up is minimal, but then you've got them for the, every PM. Um, and you can set the thing up remotely up to four devices per um I think up to four devices, up to Medibase, so that gives you, um, I think, 16 infusion devices can be tested um, simultaneously. 
um, and we measure floor, volume, all the, everything that's in there, you know, the um, inclusion, any bolus stuff. It'll give you some real-time graphical and numerical results on your PC. It'll give you um, percentage error, limits and expected values. This can be saved under asset um, information. So if you've got your asset management software or CMMS, then all of the critical information, asset ID, manufacturer, serial number of the device, can be put in, not only just in Medibase, which is our software package, but also in the device itself. You can view these results, you can print the certificates, you can attach PDFs to your asset management software, um, and you pretty much get what you'd expect with performance testing of any medical device for traceability purposes. Um, instantaneous results on the screen, is something that I've re repeated many times because it's, for me, the real, um, the real good feature within the the, the, the multi-floor itself, this instantaneous um, result to give you validity of setup. One thing that needs to be considered when using any pump analyzer is maintenance. So before you test, before you do any test, and this is really important, relevant for people that have actually bought the multi-floor just as much as it is relevant to potentially new customers. Um, before testing, you must have a connection vessel and needs to be placed on the same level um, as the device itself. Only use deionized water. Don't use saline, don't use any tap water, don't use any other solution than deionized because we have a precision pump in there. Um, and this precision pump um, is a medical pump and it will perform um, premium with deionized water. Um, it's a bit like you, you don't put, if you want to keep your car well maintained, well serviced and you want the performance of your car, you're going to use the correct oil. Very similar um, thing with the, the multi-floor, it requires deionized water to have longevity and performance of testing. Um, tube and diameter is important. Um, both in the outlet and inlet that go into the, um, well, the inlet and drain, I should say, that go into the multi-floor. The use of right tubing um, will pretty much, again, give you premium performance. Um, keep the tubing as short as possible. Um, it's just pure physics, really. So how do we connect this? The pump goes to the inlet, the, um, the drain outlet goes to your collection vessel. Before we do any type of infusion, what is really important is that we get rid of any air bubbles in the system. So how is this, how do we clear air bubbles? We clear them um, by priming, so we get our solution in, uh, in any with the infusion device or even manually with the syringe and we just make sure a flow of deionized water has went all the way through the system. Pretty much recommend that you would do it for about 30 seconds. Um, one thing that is good for maintenance is using something called a Micro 90 solution. And we have a maintenance guide on our website to give the guidance of performance and how you should use this micro 90 solution. Um, and effectively, what it does is it's, it's like a wet agent almost. You put a really small concentration in. If you wanted to put a small concentration on for typical PPMs, then you would keep your 
um, multi-floor, well-maintained, but also every month you get put through um, a higher concentration. The guidance again is on our website and it will give, it will clean out the um, each channel. So it's something to bear in mind um, when it's often overlooked by some of our users um, thinking you can put saline in this thing. Saline has impurities in we have to have solutions that don't have these type of impurities. So what you would do a lot of the time is, um, this is a typical setup where we have our syringe driver um, tubing at a certain diameter going in the inlet and then the collection vessel going from the drain and the outlet. So to summarize, Using the multi-floor, you can double your test capacity for each channel compared to the nearest competitor. It saves time with accurate and instantaneous flow measurements, and I'll show you some of that in a second. Um, meets manufacturer's test requirements um, by creating or sharing test protocols for different models and applications, so you can get your service manual for each of your pumps, and you can program it in as a as an um, automatic test sequence, fully traceable results and storage, so you can store the results within the, the multi floor after you've done an automatic test, um, which kind of reduces some type of time and manual data errors, i.e., if you were writing results down. Improved um, data analysis because because of how high the resolution is of the molly floor. Um, we have data storage. Um, it's fully compatible to the internationally accepted standard for manufacturers to meet, which is a 60601-2-24. Has a large, clear viewing uh, screen. Viewing angle is good. You can see it from up to five meters away. Um, increased throughput. If you use it in conjunction with Medibase um, and the remote control feature and it has a flexible purchase so you can have one channel, two channels, four channels and these can be optionally in future upgraded as and when you require. So the, we have put that together as a flexible flex flexible and um, purchase option. Here's some um, accuracy or specifications on how accurate the multi floor is and the range of measurement. Bear in mind the 1% criteria. If you are looking at test accuracy ratios and traceability and um, pretty much the traceability pyramid and accuracy pyramid going back to national physical laboratories. Then we have the pressure accuracy. It has a, a both um, negative and positive pressure thresholds, um, plus or minus 1%. And then some bolus measurement criteria for accuracy. So to summarise, and after this summary, I'm going to go on and do a, a, a quick test. You've got this instant flow to highlight immediate problems. So you don't have to wait for 10, 15 minutes, but approximately about two minutes. Um, and we'll see that once I do some tests. Um, built in automation, so you don't have to look at paper protocol. Um, service manuals, it can all be input within the test, the tester itself, which means that if you have staff that aren't particularly trained but are competent, all they have to do is follow the test procedure within the, 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 the multi-flow itself. Um, so that's a real positive um, inclusion. 
Exchange setups between instruments and clone multiple units reduces uh, time setup so we can pretty much, um, if you buy multiple of these things, we can, all of your test procedures can be put into all of your uh, multi flows within a matter of minutes. Um, so there's, there's no real labor or it's not a resourceful. The key really for me is resource. Using a device like the Multiflow is going to save you time. In the long term, you're going to be saving a lot of time other than using um, different archaic, uh, almost, um, measurement technologies. So, I mean, effectively, it's an all-in-one tool that covers all your needs to uh, correctly test infusion pumps. We do have a guidance book on our website. If you go to our website and you go to downloads, you go to guides, there is a introduction to infusion pump testing. And this is a cited, almost um, educational guidance booklet that will give you everything that you need to know about testing um, infusion pumps. We have electrosurgical, we have our 60601 guidance, we have vital signs, we have defibrillation. We've got a number of, uh, of uh, we've got a grown number of guidance books that can be downloaded. So they're useful. I mean, my presentation is pretty much based on most of the stuff that's in this guidance um, booklet. Any questions? I will, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. I will answer via email um, because I, I find it with webinars a, a bit tricky. Uh, it doesn't quite work as well. So. If you have any questions on the device, if you have any questions on testing procedures, if you have any questions on anything Rigel related, give me an email and um, I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. One thing to note, follow us on Facebook, follow us on LinkedIn, follow us on Twitter, and if you're watching this on YouTube, or this will be put out on YouTube, um, at a later time. Um, all of the latest news can be fed, or at least um, the latest news that you can get um, will be on our LinkedIn, that is on uh, events that we are going to, that is on new firmware updates, um, promotions, etc, etc. So if you look at our social media um, websites you should be able to get all of the in current news from Rigel. Right okay so what I'm going to do now is just start a quick test. What you see on the screen now in the main menu is perform test. You have remote mode, you have data, and we have um, setup. I'm just going to set some infusion up on my infusion device. I'm going to do a manual test, so if I go into perform test, I've got um, channel 1, it's set up for channel 1. So the characteristics I'm going to put in, we're going to look at flow, volume, I don't need to set any back pressure criteria up, sometimes you get that from a service manual. Um, 30 seconds is good for a sampling window, I'm going to do the infusion over an hour, I'm not, but if I wanted to I can um, change this to up to 24 hours, I'm going to just put an hour down for the purpose of this exercise. And then I'm, we're going to look at average flow, but if you want to, you can pretty much set your, uh, the multi flow for volume, average flow, instant flow. We want in, um, average flow, mean flow. We're going to do a test at 100 millimeters, 100 millilitres of per hour, and set the threshold up plus or minus 2%. So the deviation for um, the infusion. So once I'm satisfied with this, 
button press ready and then I'll just start refuse on my device and then what we'll see here if I go to this angle here you can see my infusion device you can see what I'm doing with the, the tester itself. What I'm interested in is the main flow. We have um, time elapsed, we have the time remaining. So effectively the timing is pretty good because you can set it up, you can go away, do something, and then you'll get the, the correct timing as per service manual. We have peak flow, we have instantaneous flow. So again, the instantaneous flow in particular, um, there it is, uh, sorry, will give you pretty much what the pump is infusing at um, within an instant. So well, a couple of minutes, and I, can, I know that I've already set this to 100, that I'm gonna be pretty much um, getting 100. If there was a failure, if there was some kind of problem with the whole setup in the system, I, I, within an instant I'm going to know that the, the setup is wrong. So that's, that's the real beauty of using the, the multi flow. And this can be done on all the channels uh, simultaneously. We have the percentage deviation, but this is in green. If it goes red it means that we're looking to be out of calibration but as the, anyone knows with infusion over time this will smooth out just because of the dynamics of actually using um, you know, a, a controlled loop effect well open loop but at least it's um, it's uh, a system that's going to be monitoring its own flow rate and then we have um, volume which has been infused, and we have the pressure um, that's been measured um, too. So you've got, at the moment, this is our mean flow rate, and this is our percentage deviation. And I'd imagine this will become, over time, less and less. Um, and then if I wanted to see this represented on a graph, there's my, um, so I, we had a little bit of a, with, with most infusions, you're going to see a, a little bit of a, a peak when you start to infuse. And then the red lines indicate where my upper and lower pass-fail thresholds are. So we get a graphical uh, representation on screen just to see how well the, the device is infusion. As per service manuals, service manuals will, will have this, um, this information in. And then we have a, a, a linear graph on what's been infused. So you can see the average flow, it's pretty good. It's got a set of 100. Um, and um, I, I, I'm not gonna go through the full test of the, of the multi-flow because it's quite You've got to go from one test to another, and I want to keep the the multi the, the multi flow presentation relatively um, short because we've already went over an hour. Um, if you need want any more information, if you want to see any more demonstrations, get in touch with us, get in touch with our distributors, and get in touch with our sales guys. Um, thank you all for the joining the webinar. Um, I've really enjoyed it. If you can um, f send some feedback or ask some questions on the device, it would be really appreciated. Right, thank you.